Okay, sir. I'm starting here. Great. Yep. Sure. Okay, sir. Okay. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome uh, to the Vertical Three, uh, which we concentrate on practical sessions on open and proprietary software. As you all are aware, uh, last Friday we couldn't do the session uh, because of the COVID situation. Uh, so. Now we will be smoothly carrying on with the session. So today will be the 15th session. Myself, uh, Giri, who is one of the coordinator for Dot Discovery Hackathon. And I'm happy to uh, let you know that the registration for DDH is just started, but ensure that you have uh, registered with the MyGov account also. So you can uh, start uh, generating the or creating the account for MyGov also. And slowly you will get to know the registrations for Drug Discovery Hackathon. And please do not share any personal details in your live chat and uh, kindly refrain from greetings. We accept all your greetings, but we do not want to miss any important questions uh, that you are going to ask. So uh, that's a usual disclaimer, which I usually uh, do it uh, every session. And today uh, we have a speaker that is Bilal as well as uh, uh, Surojit from Camaxon. Uh, today they'll be talking about a chemical representation toolkit. All the other, their previous sessions on Marvin Beans, Instant JCAM is available in MHRD Innovation channel, the same YouTube channel which you're watching. So over to you, uh, Bilal. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Giri. Uh, let me know if you see my slides. Yes, your slides are visible. Yes. All right. So once again, thank you, Giri, and uh, welcome to everyone to this uh, Vertical 3 of Drug Discovery Hackathon. Uh, my name is Bilal, and I'm going to take you through the presentation as well as some demo of uh, chemical structure representation toolkit. Uh, we, we're going to see in detail the chemical sterilizer, structure checkers, as well as uh, chemical calculators and predictors. Uh, with me here is Surajit from Pune, uh, and we will take you through the, uh, these tools. So uh, let's start. Uh, before, uh, I would like to show you that if in case you have any questions after listening to this session or from the previous session, you can contact us on these emails. Uh, we will also make sure that we uh, make these, this presentation as well as the previous presentation available on these uh, URLs, uh, uh, not only the presentations, but the sample data which are used in today's session will also be available at this URL. So uh, you are encouraged to go there and check these slides, uh, play with the data set and uh, get yourself familiarized with the tools. Uh, so this is the third session of Chemexon. Uh, uh, you can see here, uh, a schedule and, and uh, the related uh, problem statement. So we will be taking this fourth one, which is chemical representation toolkit today. So first and foremost, let me start, start with chemical sterilizer, which are used for canonicalizing the chemical structures. So uh, what is the pretext or the, or the background of this uh, sterilization of chemical structure? So there does not exist a strict convention that defined how to represent chemical structures. So consequently, molecule can be displayed in multiple ways. For example, chemists can draw an aromatic ring in aromatized form or by using alternate single and double bond or uh, draw hydrogen bond explicitly or use only the implicit representation of hydrogen. So the standardizer, which is a tool from Chemexon, uh, it helps to standardization of chemical structure uh, which is the process of transforming molecule with different chemical representation into a canonical form. Uh, a standardized molecule obey the same chemical representation rule, uh, thus ensuring comparability of structure along with uh, retaining chemical uniqueness. Uh, so as I said, uh, uh, if you see it here in the screen, uh, on, on, the, on the right hand side, the first example you see here is 
the groups are mentioned in the abbreviated form. Uh, by using a standardizer, you can convert them and extend them. So uh, uh, this makes them identifying the unique structure, identifying duplicate structure in the database very easy. So there are other examples also. Uh, today I will uh, give you a little bit practical uh, background also on these tools. Uh, let's let's take some example. Uh, one one of the use case of using a standardizer is to uh, remove the duplicate from the database. So as I mentioned, that chemical compound may exist in different structure representation. So the same molecule can appear multiple times in database. So using a consistent molecular representation uh, created by a standardizer can uncover this issue. So in this example here, if you look at these uh, four structures on the left side. Uh, it is hard to notice, but when you look closely, you will identify these highlighted structures are basically the same structure, but their groups or attachment were represented in abbreviated form, so they might not be uh, easy to identify and remove them from the database, but essentially they are the same structure, so any sort of machine learning training should require them you to remove these structures. Uh, uh, what are the other actions available with, uh, with the standardizer? So let's have a look on them. Uh, I would like to mention here the order of these uh, actions are important. So you should make sure that you do not put them in order that the later part of uh, actions nullify the previous actions. Uh, one example could be also used where, uh, where these standardizer could be used is to remove the fragment. So in this example, you see there are three fragments in a given molecule. And of course, you cannot, uh, or you should, uh, you do not want to uh, use all those uh, fragments. So you can use this remove fragment uh, standardizer action uh, with the option of keeping largest fragment. Uh, so the output, you only get the largest fragment from your input molecule. The other example is uh, of the stripping the salt. Uh, Sometimes uh, the structures are uh, experimentally. Uh, uh, available uh, when the structures are performed, so they are always some, uh, sometimes they could be with the salt also. Uh, so for uh, you can use this action to remove the salt. Uh, the other example is that in case uh, your some of the structure are uh, represented along with the solvent, uh, so you should remove the solvent before taking any other further analysis. Uh, the other example also is that uh, you can tautomerize your input structure and make them in a major tautomeric form. So these are the uh, only few examples. There are uh, almost 65 or more than 60 actions available. Uh, and uh, on later part of the presentation today, I will take you through some of those examples. Uh, let's talk about uh, how you can access these strizers. So where are they available? Uh, the one of the tool or one of the, you can say, most prominent one is that they are available as a desktop tool. So a standardizer comes with its own GUI, which lets you uh, standardize the given input file as well as generate the configuration file. And they are also available from JCAM for Office Suite, which is, uh, which is uh, a tool from Chemexon to bring the chemical intelligence to a Microsoft Office document. Of course, they are also available as a command line tool to make it uh, easy for you to integrate in your own workflow or the script. Uh, they are also available in workflow integration. So in the later part of the training sessions, when we have this NIME session, you will see these uh, nodes in much detail. Uh, not only NIME, they are also available uh, as, as component of pipeline pilot. And of course, they are also inbuilt in our database engines such as JKM and Instant JKM. Uh, in the previous session, we uh, had showed you the Instant JKM demo. Uh, briefly, we touched upon that. So that's uh, that's you can you can remember that these all tools which I'm going to explain you in much detail uh, are also available from this GUI from uh, uh, Instant JKM. So let me talk about now structure checkers, uh, which is used for correcting errors in chemical structures. Uh, a structure checker is an interactive chemical validation tool that detect and fixes common structure errors in chemical compound, uh, which could be potential source of problem for your later workforce. 
so beside the stars, uh, the preferred representation can also be fixed by a structure checker if needed. Uh, structure checkers work with predefined checking options and you can choose which one should be considered when you run a check. Additionally, you can also define a fix to change the reported issue in the structure. Uh, so there are two modules in structure checkers. One is checker and one is fixer. Uh, so these, these issues are fixed, uh, checked by the structure checkers and then they, uh, if the fixer is available, they are automatically fixed by the fixer component of this tool. So if you see here in, in the workflow here, there is an input structure is goes through the tool. Uh, if there is no issue detected, uh, then, then of course there is no problem, but if there is an issue, uh, then it either takes these three parts. Uh, if it can fix them automatically using a fixer, uh, it fixes them. In other case, if there are no fixer available, the users are prompted that these are the problems with your structure. So uh, decide what you want to do with your structures. Uh, let me show you some examples of structure checkers. Uh, so again, there are lots of uh, different options available. I will mention a few of them uh, uh, which are important for uh, QSAR or machine learning or any kind of uh, data-driven modeling. So the core idea of a structure checker is the strict separation of structure checking and a fixing process, as I told you. So uh, one of the options available with the structure checker is valence checker. Uh, so in this example, you see nitrogen has five valency and you see there is this uh, red uh, sort of semi red or light red uh, uh, sphere over the nitrogen. It tells that there is this valency problem with the nitrogen. The other example from this list is atom or bond checker. So if there is a wrong bond length or there is a wrong angle, so it will prompt you that uh, these, these are the problem with your input molecule. Uh, there are different kind of stereo checkers, which uh, which checks your molecule for any sort of stereo uh, problem. And then one other example is that uh, aromaticity can be also detected if they are uh, drawn wrong in your input structures. Let me uh, a little bit give you a little bit background of calculator and predictor, which we also gonna uh, show you from the command line today. So you might have seen this slide in the previous training session from Chemexon. Uh, so there are lots of calculator functions available and they are bundled in these six, uh, six groups. So a structural bundle has these charge and hydrogen bond donor acceptor type of calculations. In protonation, you have PK calculation, major micro species prediction, so forth and so forth. Uh, uh, what are the other chemical features? So, uh, in, in physical chemical calculators, you have, as I mentioned, PKA, then log P, log D, solubility. Uh, in the first session, if you could remember, we also uh, showed you these all uh, extra plugins in the Marvin sketch suit where you can calculate all these or the most of these uh, calculation calculator from the Marvin sketch tool directly. Uh, before going into the practical session, the practical part of the uh, today's workshop, uh, I will little bit uh, give you an example use case where these uh, all different toolkits can be used. So one of the uh, application study we performed was deep neural network based prediction of her activity. So you know this her is uh, is is a, is a is a receptor which uh, which sometimes cause problems uh, with the drug and there is which can lead to cardiotoxicity of certain drug molecules. Um, so the, the the context of using these tools is that any kind of data driven analysis or prediction you should make sure that your chemical data which you're going to use for training or modeling should be clean. So there is a there is a notion in in data science that which is which is sent like garbage in and garbage out. So if you feed in uh, corrupt data, inconsistent data to your training algorithm, so you will get the garbage. Uh, because you have fed in the garbage data. So this is very, very important to uh, uh, to make sure that machine learning or any kind of uh, deep learning method uh, are uh, specifically uh, are fed a clean and good data. So what it means is that there are several, so in why it is important because in, 
in machine learning in general or deep learning specifically uh, these are very iterative process so there are similar round of cycle from idea to experiment and back to tuning the initial data so most of the time as much as you can say 80% of the time of a team working with this uh, area of artificial intelligence is dedicated to a data processing which includes cleaning and sterilization and it is quite important to ensure that you uh, your chemical data is consistent and meaningful so uh, the study which we performed was the hard modeling uh, using this deep neural network so this was the architecture of uh, uh, deep neural network uh, which was developed using tensorflow backend uh, you can see there were uh, 300,000 molecules uh, which were uh, hard clamp based uh, assay mm -hmm. and then uh, they were feed into this neural network to predict the three classes whether they are inhibitor or activator or they are uh, inactive compounds. Uh, so with this workflow basically I wanted to show you that how these tools were used so uh, we started with this as I mentioned 300,000 molecules which is three like molecules and these were the data set from uh, a published uh, study uh, using patch clamp assay data set so once we got this data uh, we passed it through the structure checkers so check for all these problems if there are valency issues in your in, in my data set uh, and detect the aromaticity issues, uh, if there are any stereo problems or there are any ring strains in my input molecules. So once the molecule was passed through these all uh, steps and checks, uh, whatever could be fixed was fixed, whatever could not be fixed was removed from the initial data set. And then the next phase, we take these all uh, input data set to chemical sterilizer, uh, where we remove the salt, uh, sorry, remove the solvent, uh, remove the small fragment and salt, uh, totemize the molecule, make sure that they are chemicalized and using uh, this molecular weight um, calculator, we make we only restricted our molecules between the molecular weight of 150 to 700 and keeping only uh, where there are less than 10 heavy atoms. So once this part was uh, done, so this was basically data cleaning and processing, then comes the calculating these different chemical descriptors of fingerprints uh, using again chemical tools. Uh, and once we have that, we can feed that into a deep neural network to uh, generate a model which can later on predict the new molecules. So with this, I wanted to show you that how they are used in, in, in a real workflow. Uh, and today I will uh, take you through some of the uh, major examples, some of the common examples, uh, how you can work with them. So uh, with this, I will switch on to demo now and I will show you how you can do this whole thing. So as I mentioned in, in my slide that these are available from command line also. So mostly I will show you through these all, the, all these things through command line, but uh, you should not forget that they are also available within instant JCAM. They are also available in nine, which uh, we will show in the later coming on sessions. Uh, so let me just quickly uh, bring out my command line. So this is my command line here. So the first example is uh, is this line here, which is, let me just quickly go out of the, yes. So this, I, I'm gonna copy this line. Uh, of course, you don't need to remember the command, but I will explain what all these inputs are doing. Uh, so it's easier for you to, uh, start learning when we look at the documentation. So this is the command, standardize for standardizing a molecule, and this is my input molecule. So this is the smile string, but I will show you how these molecules look like so that when you see the output, it's easier for you to uh, it's easier for you to understand them. So I will open this Marvin, which you have seen in the second session probably or the first session. Uh, so this is how my input molecules look like. So this is a smiley string of that input molecule and I am giving with this C flag the 
the action which I want to perform. And then the remaining part is uh, this one. And I will kind of explain that also what it is doing. So basically, I am running this command. There is uh, okay. Just a second. I should start this command line again. Right. So you see this and raise the input molecule and I'm going to ask it to add explicit hydrogen. So this option tells the command line or tool to add the explicit hydrogen to this input molecule. And what I'm doing exactly, it's actually the next line because if you run this command without this option, it will give you an output, but that output again will be a string file or a smile, uh, sorry, smile string, which is which is not good to see or not easy to understand. So what I'm doing is this, I'm piping it to another tool from Chemexon, Marvin View. And again, I should remind you that you have seen these examples in the previous training, which is a part of Marvin sketch. So I'm giving this output to this Marvin View and asking them to show me the output molecule. So if I run this command, so you uh, you remember I showed you this molecule in the Marvin sketch. So that was there was no explicit hydrogen, but because I asked the sterilizer to put this explicit hydrogen, so in my output I have the structure like this. I hope it's clear. Uh, let's take the another example, which is uh, of aromatizing the uh, input molecule. So again, I will show you uh, the input molecule. How does it look like? Uh, and then how does it look like after the action has been performed on it. So I just copied this uh, smile string. Uh, I'm going to clean the slate here and then I paste the structure. Oh, sorry, I think I copied the, those tiny bits also. So that's why they were not recognized. All right. So this is this is the input molecule, and what I'm doing with the command is that uh, the command is here, which tells to aromatize this input molecule and pipe it to the Marvin view. So when I run this, Vital. yes, Rojit here. Uh, can you just increase the font size of the command prompt? Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, that will be better. Yeah, thank you. Sorry to interrupt. All right, just a minute. Uh, font here and should be. Let me know if it is clear now. Yeah, better. Maybe you can just increase a bit more. Okay. Uh, I hope 24 will be okay, right? Yeah, I guess this is good to go. Okay. Yes. So thanks again, Suji, for, for reminding me so that user can uh, see it properly. So this is the output of my previous command. And as I showed you in the Marvin, the structure, this part of the molecule was not aromatized. So I will open it side by side so that you can compare it. So you see uh, with, the, with the structure, with the standardizer, I have asked uh, the tool to aromatize this part. So it identified this benzene ring is the aromatic one and it has Basically, it, it, it converts it to the aromatic representation uh, from the calculator to aromatic representation. You can, of course, go, go back to the, the previous version also. You can do the back and forth also. Uh, okay, let's see the, another example, which is about removing the, uh, the, the salt from the molecule. Uh, once again, I will again show you. So I'm showing you these all examples from the command line, but I will show them with the GUI also. Uh, the reason of using uh, this is command line is that because you get to know the different options available and you feel more connected to the tools and how it is performing. So the next command is again uh, sunrise, and I'm giving this this input molecule. Uh, I can also do one thing. I can uh, show you this molecule right from the uh, command line. Uh, so I will use this Marvin view uh, to see this input molecule. So I will say M view and then I will put my molecule here. Or the other thing I could do is paste it to the. Uh, OK, there is some, I think, uh, in my command, which is not view, it is M view. 
All right, so it's coming up. So you see in this my input molecule, it has this salt, it's a sodium salt of uh, this compound. Uh, and of course, I don't want to uh, use this as a sodium salt, so I want to remove this salt. That was my this command here. So I will just quickly go ahead and run this uh, command, which is strips the salt, and then the output is shown in the Marvin view. And you will see that the salt part is removed. Uh, so uh, this here it is. The sodium has been removed, and your main uh, main part of the molecule is preserved here. Uh, the next, I would like to show how you can remove the solvent from the molecule. Uh, so again, let's first see the uh, molecule first. Uh, it will be much easier to do this in in the GUI, uh, which I'm going to show you again. Uh, Okay, so here is my input molecule using Marvin view. So you see this has a cyclohexane as a solvent. Uh, probably it was during the experimental work um, stored like this or due to some reason. But you don't want to use this uh, solvent in your workflow. So what you can do is use this command to remove them. Uh, remove them from your input molecule. Uh, so, of course, in a, in a real scenario, you would not run these commands one by one. You will use them in some sort of workflow where these things are performed automatically, but knowing them how they work from command line makes it very really easier. So, here is the output. Um, you see the, the cyclohexane, which was the solvent, is removed from the input molecule. Uh, I'm going to close it now and let's see the, another example is uh, is the removing of fragment. So I'm going to copy this command. Before that, let's see the molecule. How does it look like? So I'm going to use margin now for this time. So this is my molecule. If you can see, it has a uh, another alcohol molecule uh, with this with this main main compound. So the, my next command is basically I want to remove these fragments. Uh, I'm going to copy this command and then explain what these different options are there. Okay, I think uh, yes. So uh, standardize is the command. This is my input string. I'm saying remove fragment. And then there is uh, this remove fragment options uh, or remove fragment command comes with three different multiple options. So I'm saying that the method of removing the fragment is that keep the largest fragment. Uh, so what it will do, it will identify the smallest fragment uh, and then remove them and only keep the largest one. So if I run this command, and so this is the output. You remember there was a, a ethyl alcohol which has been removed now. Uh, let me show you another example of this command, which is I want to say, let's say, keep the smallest molecule. So uh, with the method section, I will change it to keep the smallest. Uh, and then what it will do. Uh, you see the output here that it has kept the smallest molecule but removed uh, the biggest from your input molecule. All right, so the next example or the last example in this sterilizer is, uh, is uh, transforming the nitro. So let me just a little bit give you uh, the background of this command or the background of this problem. I will again open Marvin sketch, remove the previous compounds from there and put this molecule here. So many times you will see uh, the nitro group is represented like this. So there is a debate in the scientific community which is the correct way. However, some people still view this way, but that's not the correct way actually. Uh, nevertheless, you will find these examples of these representation of nitro compound if you download the data from some publicly available data set. Uh, but you want to make sure that this, this representation is always converted to a correct representation where one of the oxygen has a negative charge and the corresponding nitrogen has a positive charge and only there are one, uh, one bond between them so then the nitrogen's valency is fixed. So I will copy this command again. So basically what it will do, this command will convert this uh, inconsistent representation of nitro group uh, into 
into a uni uh, into a correct one and i'm going to again show you the output of the marvin view so this is the correct uh, way to represent a nitro compound so my strenderizer command has uh, uh, correctly uh, validated the structure converted the structure to correct form okay so this was the last uh, command in the strenderizer demo i'm going to show you how you can use the gui tool so i have here uh, a strenderizer tool open here i'm going to bring it here so this is the gui of a strenderizer tool so when you start it uh, this 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 gives you this this window here where it uh, asks you to select your input molecule so i will click here on browse and i will give this uh, input uh, as here file which has i think 15 to 20 structures so this is the strenderizer input uh, and then I click next to go to the next screen. So here is the is the is the so you see here on the left hand side there are lots of actions available. Uh, you can choose them. You can configure them in different orders. So for example, uh, on the right hand side you see advertise. I will just remove them the the advertise action and show you how to bring it here. So for Aromatize your input molecule, you will select that and click add. So like this, I have uh, added these four or five actions. So the clean 2D, if you click on or any of the example here on the right, right hand side, you will see the additional options if they are available for a given action. And what these actions are doing, if you click on them here on the left hand side, so this bottom side, you can see uh, this clean 2D action cleans the molecule graph in 2D. For example, the aromatized one is the uh, one which converts uh, the given input structure to aromatic form. Let's say that it strips salt, what it does. Uh, so it searches for salt in the molecule and extract them and basically remove them. Uh, so there are many actions available. I will just show you these few five actions. Uh, the transform nitro, which I showed you again, these all actions for the command line. So what it does is that it transforms the incorrect representation of uh, nitro group into a correct representation. So once you have selected these options, uh, you are happy with this, you can go ahead and click next, uh, where it will ask you to define an output file. So I'm going to click browse and I will say I want to store all these actions, the output in this historizer output file, uh, which is in my case a Chemexon Marvin file, uh, MRV file, and I click OK, and then the next is next. Now, uh, and now everything is configured. I have given my input molecules. I have defined what I want to take with the riser, and uh, uh, I have defined my output. So I'm ready to run this command. So here on this bottom, you see run command. I'm going to run it, and it's finished. So once the command is run, you will see these three different tabs here. So this is the summary of the your previous command you run, this is the output structure. So you see all those examples which I showed you from the command line, I have basically put them in a file and just input to this standardizer GUI tool. And here you see the report. Uh, I will little bit take uh, some time here this output. So this was my input structure, as you can see in the first column. The second column tells me what were the actions applied. So I selected five or six options, and of course, all of them will not be applied to every molecule because those those uh, things might not be valid valid for a given compound. So in this case, uh, the action which has applied been applied is clean 2D, and this is the output structure. Of course, you don't see anything because the input molecule all was almost clean, there was nothing much to clean, but because this option was defined, uh, it nonetheless perform on every given structure. The second structure, which uh, you see, because it detected that the aromatic, this, this, this uh, benzene ring is an aromatic ring, and the given configuration input was to aromatize any aromatic ring, and so it has converted them into this representation of the aromatic ring. The third example you can see, uh, it has a salt, uh, and of course, the salt can also be removed using this remove fragment. So it was uh, uh, in the up in the order list. That's why it has identified this as one of the fragment and removed it. 
the same way the the fourth example uh, the small this cyclohexane ring was identified as solvent and it has been removed additionally the aromatization has been also done because it could identify the skin here so forth and so on uh, you can see the remaining example also uh, their applied action and their output action their output structure Okay, so that's what I wanted to show you about sterilizer. Uh, let's go ahead and now I will show you different option or different how to perform this structure checkers. Uh, for this, I will not use the command line now. I will directly show you uh, the structure checker GUI, but uh, make sure I mean make sure you also try it your own site with the command line because that's a very good way to learn things, uh, especially these backend toolkits. Uh, so I am going to start the GUI for structure checkers, which uh, somewhat looks looks similar to a sterilizer that it asks for an input molecule. Uh, so I will go ahead and say browse my input molecules, which are I think uh, uh, let's use this example. So these are a few molecules I downloaded from Webcam, and they are in an STF format. Uh, I will accept this and the next is uh, you might identify is a similar looking window but these actions are not the standardizer action now these are the structure checker actions so there are many many options available and some of them are already selected uh, it's the same how you want to select basically so you select the one which you want and you uh, click on them and click add so it will be added to your configuration that's how you do it so i have already uh, done these i think one two three four five six seven eight uh, eight different st uh, structure checkers uh, um, the first one is that i want to check if there are any aromaticity error in my molecule uh, uh, there is if there are any incorrect tetrahedral stereo uh, structures or there are non stereo wedge bond in my input structure or there are any valency issue so like these things which i mentioned in the slides that uh, i have selected them which i think is useful in my case so once you are happy with this list of uh, actions or checkers you want to perform you will go ahead and click next by the way, I forgot to mention here this example of export or downloading it as a URL. You can configure your own uh, options and you can use this uh, in instant JCAM, uh, the, the custom uh, standardizer or sector checker. So let's go ahead and click ahead next. Uh, so here are different options, set options. Uh, so in, in this, there are three options of check, manual, automatic and fix. I will select fix here because I want to solve the problem with the fixer configured for each checker and if there are something which cannot be fixed it will ask me to take a look uh, and the report option I keep it output report so that I can see what was changed and what was the action applied to my input molecules. Then next I will define the output file which is in my case structure checker output file is the MRV document. Uh, I'm happy with that and accept and let's go ahead and run next and click the run uh, because i had already run that's why it's asking that you want to run a structure check here again yes i would like to run it again so you see uh, it has identified some issues it has fixed the issues where it could fix there are fixer available but it is now prompting me to this structure here and you can see here this option that there is this valency error checker found so, so valency error checker does not come with a fixer because it doesn't know how to solve the valency of different molecules. That's where it lets user to decide what to want to do. So uh, once I click on this valency checker error uh, uh, field here, you see this nitrogen being highlighted because that's their valency is wrong here. So either you can fix this manually, or if you do not want, of course you want to fix this. So I will correct the structure here quickly and here we go so i'm happy with this this these you see the checkers problem has gone now because the structure is correct and i will accept it so 
my structure checker has run. I, again, you have summary, report, and output. So let's see in the uh, report what you have. The same way, the input structure here, the identified issues, and the applied fixer, and the fixed structures, and the remaining issues if the issue were not able to fix by the software. So let's take uh, maybe this first example. So it finds there were chiral flag error checkers and it has applied that fixer and you see the output. Let's go to the molecule which was uh, prompted to us to fix, uh, which is probably uh, somewhere down at the bottom. Uh, so, uh, okay, this, this was the molecule. Okay, I think, yeah. So, you see, this was the prompted molecule to us, and we fixed the, the valency, and this is the fixed structure now. Uh, this is another example uh, of a bond angle checker or bond length checker. So, you see, my input molecule has the wrong bond, and the length was not correct. So, after applying the checker and fixers, you, my, my output molecule looks proper now. Uh, so this is the way you can correct your input structure in one go uh, or you can say a large number of molecules can be processed uh, uh, very quickly. So you don't need to run it them one by one. All right. Uh, next, go to the next uh, practical demo for the calculator examples. Uh, uh, once again, I would like to remind you these all calculators and plugins are available in Instant JCAM also. Some of them also available in Marvin Sketch, but here I'm going to show you it from the command line. And in the later on sessions where we take nine, we will show you how to use them from the nine to create your own workflow. All right. So let's take the first one, which is, uh, sorry. All right, so uh, one second, because I'm in the wrong directory, it is complaining that it could not find the, the correct file, so it's in my desktop, hackathon, all right. So let's run that command. I will explain what this command is doing. So cxcal is the, is the, uh, the basic command for uh, invoking all the calculator and predictor toolkit and with different op flag options you can choose a different thing to do. So what I'm doing here, I'm giving this input file which is pumpkin example stf file and I'm passing this flag which is pk and I'm asking the command uh, line tool to calculate the pk value for my given input structures which are within this file. So when I run this command, so let me a little bit uh, make it bigger so that we can see. So my input file has 16 structures and it has calculated these different acidic and basic pKa value for all the given, given structures. So you can see them here. Uh, and of course, you can uh, also save these results into external file. I will show you with the later command how you can save them into a different file and then maybe use them for some other function purpose also. Uh, the next is I would like to talk about how you can calculate the charge of your molecule. So I just copied the command. So you see here the CX calc remain the same. So this is kind of, you can say, one uh, super command or parent command, not super command. So my input file is the same, but I have different option here, which is dash M and charges. Charge is the option, so I'm calculating the charge. But the output of this command is actually a structure where charge has been calculated for each atom. So that's why I'm, like previous example, passing the input, the output to Marvin View to look them graphically. So you can see here, I will make it a little bit bigger. So I had 15 or 16 input structures and it has calculated the charges for all these input atoms and uh, I am looking at them using this margin view. So you can also uh, give a little bit longer file or file with the larger number of structures, uh, more number of structures to calculate these charges. 
All right, uh, let's take another example of, uh, so how you can calculate, uh, let's say, multiple uh, properties in one single uh, command. So again, uh, CX calc remain the same, my input file is same, but now I'm asking it to calculate these three different properties. So I, will, I want to calculate molecular mass, log p log d and with this dash h6.4 basically i'm telling or to calculate these all properties at a ph level 6.4 so because log p and log d vary by ph that's why you have to define this if you do not give the h flag i think there is a default uh, 7.4 or something uh, which we use for calculating so here is the output again the id of my input molecules the molecular weight is here, the log P is here, and the log D at uh, pH 6.4, as I mentioned, log D is required to have a pH value given. Uh, so this is the output uh, of these three different properties uh, of my given compound. All right, let's take another example. Here, uh, I'm calculating, I think, more properties now. So I'm calculating vendor wall surface area, then mass, as we have seen in the previous example. This donor count calculates the number of uh, donor hydrogens. Acceptor counts calculate the number of hydrogen atoms. And then again, log P at pH now 7.4. So you see the options uh, output here. So I have uh, vendor wall and all those uh, options which I passed through my command line and are calculated here. Okay, uh, let's take a different example from these calculations. So this is related to uh, tautomer count or aromaticity. Uh, again, come on, remain the same. And the option here is tautomer count. So I want to count the uh, in my input structure, how many tautomer structures are possible. So when I run this command, it tells me that there are two possible tautomers. Uh, okay, in the next command, basically, I will ask it to generate all, all those two tautomers and I will uh, visualize them graphically using Marvin view as, as, uh, as done with the previous examples. So here is the command that now I'm saying generate all the tautomers uh, and this f dash f sdf is the output format so i want to uh, output in the sdf format which can i can pass it to marvin view so when i run this command you see uh, this is the output of uh, previous command passed to marvin view you see there are two different possible tautomers uh, are possible with this given structure one is this is the keto form and this is the enol form of the representation. All right, uh, next go to next example, which is related to stereoisomerism. Uh, here, like previous example here, I'm counting the stereo, all the possible stereoisomerism possible. And I run this command and uh, it tells me that with this structure, uh, there are four stereomers possible. And again, in the next command, I will generate all those different stereomers and uh, visualize them in Marvin view. So when I run this command, uh, I have all these four structures generated or predicted to be the stereoisomer of the given input molecule. So my input molecule was uh, this with these two chiral carbon centers and uh, and all the possible stereoisomers are listed here you can see them uh, they are they are predicted quite nicely all right uh, the next one is uh, cx scale top analysis or the topological analysis so basically uh, this one calculates a bunch of properties so this calculates a topological uh, descriptors so uh, with this you can generate uh, different uh, uh, topological descriptors which are most probably useful in QSAR and these kind of uh, analysis so uh, there are lots of output actually I will increase this uh, size here so it has calculated uh, I think 
10 to 15 different topological analysis uh, indices like atom count, aliphatic atom count, and so forth and so on. There is uh, aromatic bond count, there is rotatable ring uh, bond count, and these kind of things. So with this just uh, top analysis, uh, top wall and anal, you can you can calculate all these properties. All right, uh, I think uh, that's all I plan to show you today. But the last thing and the important thing is this one that uh, uh, there are, as I mentioned, there are different uh, structure checkers option, sternizer option, different option to calculate different things from command line. So where you can find all this information. So if you, uh, it's always good idea to look at the documentation by yourself and familiarize yourself uh, because you cannot remember all the details. So you can always go back and check. So if you go to chemexon.com slash product, you will see all the tools by Chemexon and if you go into a structure representation toolkit uh, product, uh, you click here on this resource and it will take you to the bottom of the page. So here is the link of uh, link to these documentations, user guides, and, uh, and and developer guides. So like this, you can also go to documentation of the structure checkers as well as calculators, and not only these, but uh, you can also go to documentation of the tools which we have showed in the previous uh, previous session and the later session we will show. Okay, that's all I plan to do. And uh, thank you very much, and we are uh, we are ready to take your questions. Thank you so much, uh, Bilal, for this wonderful session. So um, we have very few questions. I'll, I'll uh, few of, take a few of them. So uh, one of the questions is, is there any tool available uh, where we can identify the formal charge of a small molecule? Uh, yes, I think I have showed you the charge one and there are variants of this which can calculate the formal charge. Uh, so again, they are part of the CX scale. Yes. Okay. And another one is you have mentioned that there's a specific order that you have to follow. So mm -hmm. is there any specific reason behind that? Uh, for example, uh, if yes, uh, there is a reason because as I mentioned in the presentation that uh, there are some actions uh, which perform opposing actions, right? So you don't want some previous or the later action to nullify the output of previous action. I can remember an example of, let's say very sim simple example. Uh, uh, but that's, that's not a very good example is that uh, you add the hydrogen, explicit hydrogen and remove them. Of course, they are exactly opposite. Uh, I cannot remember exactly example, but this is important in, in cases uh, where there could be a conflict of these actions and you end up nullifying the action from the previous selections. Okay. Okay. And uh, so the hackathon participants also will get access to the command line version or how that is going to work? Uh, yes, I forgot to mention that we will also make them available in this DDS uh, tool room kit. So they will be available as command line tool as well as uh, when they have access to instant JCAM. So these all functionalities are available from uh, from the graphical interface also. Okay, okay. So I, I could see uh, that's all uh, uh, coming in uh, from uh, the YouTube. Um, those are the questions, but if you have any uh, concluding remarks, then I can wind up the session. Yeah, so the, that's what I would like to conclude that uh, if there are other questions, you can always reach us to the emails we have provided in the beginning of slide and we are looking forward to more trainings in the session and more interactive uh, sessions with you guys. Great. So uh, thank you all uh, viewers and uh, both in uh, YouTube as well as in Facebook. I would like to thank both the speakers today as well as uh, the members of the DDH team at NIST, uh, especially Professor Nareli Shastri and the other members who are supporting us, as well as, uh, as you can see already, the problem statement, you have the guidelines and resources available, which will give you an idea about where to start and what all things will be considered on, uh, uh, on different uh, techniques that you have to follow. So uh, this uh, document will be really helpful. But uh, if you wanted to still understand what are the do's and don'ts about drug discovery hackathon how many teams or can it be an individual how many uh, members in a team mentors all those details are given in abejeri's uh, 
YouTube channel, he has uh, hosted a video. So please visit the link is being listed here. Uh, otherwise, the registration website is on the top, uh, the official website, all the training updates as per the day, the calendar is already updated in uh, NIST website, the training website also. So that's all from me uh, for today. So thank you all uh, so much. Have a great evening and bye for now. Thank you.